we're still at the uh, Pickens County, the old P Pickens County town, and it's no longer here. Uh, and this is the old uh, Presbyterian church that we have in in the background here. Uh, a lot of, a lot of cemetery around here. Uh, if you look uh, to the to the front of us, you can see graves in front of the church on all sides of the church. We have uh, cemeteries, uh, graveyards, and there are people here who fought in the Revolutionary War. There's people here who fought in the uh, Civil War. Uh, and I, I just don't know uh, what all uh, uh, some of these people have done whose bodies now rest at this old church cemetery here. But it's a, it's a sacred place to kind of be around to think of these who have gave their lives for various causes and who have lived their lives for various causes. And we, we appreciate those who have served in the wars of our country, the Revolutionary War, some of the Indian Wars, the Civil War, uh, the world wars and so we should never uh, we should always be respectful of all those people who gave their lives but we want to pick up again today in the book of Romans chapter number 15 about the eyes of Paul the eyes of Paul like uh, 19 or 20 of these eyes of Paul and we got down to verse number 18 last time he said I will not dare speak of those any of those things which Christ hath not wrought by me to make the Gentiles obedient by word and deed, through many, through mighty signs and wonders, by the power of the Spirit of God, so that from Jerusalem round about to Iconium, right here comes another eye. He says, I have fully preached the gospel of Christ. Now I, I like that what he says that I have fully preached the gospel of Christ. Now Paul didn't hold anything back. He preached the gospel of Christ, and the gospel of Christ is his life, his death, his burial, and his resurrection again, and salvation by grace through faith. Paul fully preached the gospel of Jesus Christ. And I, I'm glad to hear that he did, and I know that he did. And I regret when I hear a preacher who does not preach the gospel of Christ. I got a, a cassette tape sent to me back in the 1980s of uh, this one particular man who pastored a church way off in another state. And somebody just thought he was such an outstanding preacher. And they thought so highly of him. So we want to share this with you, David. And I played the tape. Nowhere did I hear the gospel of Christ preached, not in that entire sermon. I, I, I ain't even sure the guy read a verse of scripture as he uh, gave his talk. More like something a, a promotional speaker would, would speak about. Uh, and, how, and so uh, that was about all it was. But Paul, when he preached, he preached the gospel of Jesus Christ. And I appreciate uh, Paul so doing that. He said, I strive to preach the gospel. And he, uh, he said, I fully preach the gospel of Christ. And he did just that. He didn't leave anything out. And I so appreciate a preacher uh, who preaches the gospel of Jesus Christ. Uh, label him any way you want to. I don't care what denomination or group he's with. If he fully preaches the gospel of Jesus Christ, he's my kind of man. Matter of fact, he's God's man if he fully preaches the gospel of Jesus Christ. And then Paul goes on here to say another eye. He, he said, Yea, so I have strived to preach the gospel, uh, not where Christ was named. He said, I've strived to go where Christ was not named. Uh, that's the place we should be sending people to, uh, where Christ is not named. Uh, we should be sending people to those places who do not have or know the gospel of Jesus Christ. And I know missionaries who go to those kind of places where they have not heard of Jesus Christ, where his name is not known. And I know missionaries who have gone and have spent their entire lives laboring and working in those areas uh, to make Christ known unto these people. And it's an amazing thing, it's a great thing, it's a wonderful thing that they would do that. They can identify the Apostle Paul in this and say, I have strived to preach the gospel where Christ, not where Christ was, was named. That's a wonderful thing to say, and I have strived. And I can name you several missionaries. Our church has sponsored uh, several missionaries uh, through, through many, many years. And missionaries have been sent to all over the world. And a lot of those people have gone not where Christ is named, but they've gone to where he is not named and where people do not know him. I know there are some people they can't fathom that 
They can't understand that. But if you ever know the Lord and you know true salvation, it is a great blessing to think that we're spreading the gospel uh, of Jesus Christ where Christ is not named. When I give money to our church's mission program, I'm confident of knowing that uh, that is going to support missionaries who go to where Christ is not named. And they're not going there to teach them how to grow corn or how to catch fish or how to filter water. They may do some of that. But basically, they're going to spread the gospel of Jesus Christ. They're not going to show them how to build houses. Uh, they can learn to build houses. Uh, they're not going to show them how to uh, have better lives as far as medicine goes. They're not going there to help them build better roads. Though they may do some of all that. But the purpose of them going is to spread the gospel of Jesus Christ. That's a wonderful thing. And then uh, look on, uh, as he says here, the nether eye. He says, lest I should build upon another man's foundation. Uh, and Paul is saying, let's read another verse in conjunction with this. But as is written, to whom he was spoken of, they shall see. <clears throat> uh, and they <clears throat> that have not heard shall understand. So Paul says, I don't want to build where some other man is already built. That makes good sense, doesn't it? <clears throat> I'm a builder. <clears throat> I enjoy building. I like to build things. I would love to build a church like this. I have built a church before. I was, I was greatly blessed to God to build a nice, beautiful brick church. I was able to have the blessings of drawing it on the drawing board and to then seeing it built, seeing people go into it. It was a great blessing in my life to get to do that. But I've not built one exactly like this. And this, I understand these brick were made uh, from the clay locally around here. And so it's a very interesting building. <clears throat> but uh, <clears throat> but I, enjoy, I enjoy going out and uh, clearing a piece of land and then digging out the, the foundation and starting up with the house. I just count that a great blessing in life to get to do that. But uh, I don't particularly care to build where someone else has already built. I just inherit their mess and their problems when I do that. I don't like to build on someone else's foundation. Uh, there, I'd have to make sure their foundation was deep enough, wide enough, and strong enough. If I build it myself, uh, then I know those things as I go. And Paul is saying right here, he says, I have strived to preach where Christ was not known. Uh, he said, uh, lest I should build upon another man's foundation. Uh, here he says, to whom he was spoken of, they shall see. And uh, to whom he was not spoken of, they shall see. And they that have not heard shall understand. Uh, so anyhow, he says, I want to go where they've not heard of Christ and where they've not seen, where they've not understood. He says, I want to be the one to break the news to them. That is a great blessing, is it not? It greatly is. If you can go and give somebody something they've never had before, they've never seen before in their entire lives, what a blessing that is. Let's look on unto another eye of Paul in verse 22. For which cause I have been much hindered from coming to you. Uh, here's another ice. I've been much hindered from coming to you. And so he was. Uh, he, uh, the devil had followed him and tried to shut him down, tried to stop him every way he had turned. Paul had to face that opposition of being hindered, being hindered. And if you think the world's going to uh, help you to get the gospel out, you're wrong. They're not. Uh, they're going to hinder you every way you turn. If you think the devil's going to smile about it, you're wrong about that too. He's not going to smile. He's not going to help you. He's going to hinder you with everything that he can. I've met people whom I knew had been so hindered that they were not able to go. I've met men who have been so hindered uh, by, by, their own, by, by their own circumstances of life that they, it would be impossible for them to go. I've met people who have been hindered uh, physically. I've met people who have been hindered uh, by uh, domestic reasons. I've met people who have been hindered because of government rules and regulations. Uh, some of these things can really be a hindrance. Uh, and so there's lots of people that try to hinder us and get in our way and keep us uh, from getting the gospel of Jesus Christ out. There's been things in my life I've attempted to do for the Lord, and I find someone standing right in my way trying to keep me from doing those things and not wishing to help a bit. Well, that's, that's a bad commentary. But Paul, no doubt, he had been hindered big time, and he, he knew what it was to face some real opposition. But you know what? He kept on going. 
Verse 23, but now having no more place in these parts, having a great desire these many years to come unto you. And he was wanting, he was wanting to go to Rome and see the people in Rome. Verse 24, whensoever I take my journey to Spain, I will come to you. He said, I'm going to take my journey to Spain one day. This is another I of Paul. And, uh, and he got to take that journey, I do believe. He got to make that. And uh, he did take his journey. Paul made a big journey for his day and his time. He journeyed. And uh, it was a great blessing that he did because the gospel came to the Gentiles because he took that journey. He made the journey. And uh, he said, when I take my journey into Spain, well, we may never go to Spain, but we could go maybe next door. We can maybe step to the guy whom we see in the parking lot. We might stop and pick up the guy by the side of the road as we make our journey. We might take our journeys a few feet. We might take our journeys to the other side of the world as Paul did. But nonetheless, when we take our journey, we're going somewhere with a purpose. That's taking your journey. And then let's, let's look on here to another, to another eye of Paul. He says, I will come to you. He says, I will come to you. And he did. Uh, he, he got to go. And Paul came. He came. And it's a great blessing when somebody comes to see you, especially somebody you love, when, when you know they have purposed in their heart to come to you. Paul says, I will come to you. I love my children greatly. I do. <clears throat> and every once in a while, I'll tell them, I'm going to come see you. It's all right. And they say, well, yes, Daddy, come on, see us. And I get there. I feel blessed in my heart to be able to come see them. And that's the thing when uh, I have come to see them. And I, I don't stay too long. I know, my, I know I don't need to move in and live with them. I'll stay a few hours, and I'll say, okay, I'm on my way. See you again. But uh, when Paul said, I will come to you, he purposed in his heart to do these things. And then another I of Paul, he said, I trust to see you in my journey and to be brought on my way thitherward by you. He said, I trust. He said, I'm hoping to see you as I come on my journey and go through that. And, and again, uh, he was able to do much of this in his lifetime. And like I said, the start of this series on the eyes of Paul, that may be several things in our lives. We should plan and try and strive to do more than we can get done. There's not a place to sit down and quit, I should say. And uh, we should always be up and going on our journey with the desires of our heart to accomplish various things for the Lord. And then he gives another eye here. He says, if first I be somewhat filled with your company. He said, I'd, love to, I'd just love to see you, Paul saying. I'd love to be filled with your company. I'd love to spend time with you. And so it is with our Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, he loves to spend time with us. He likes for us to come spend time with him. And I may be varying a little bit from Paul's exact words right here, but that's a good way to apply that. He said, I may be somewhat filled with your company. Uh, that's a good thing to be, is to be filled with the company of the believers and also to be filled with the company of the Lord Jesus Christ. Let's look at one more in verse 25. And now I go into Jerusalem to minister unto the saints. Well, he's saying right now, I am going to Jerusalem. And he got there. He did. And that was, uh, that was a, a stepping stone in his journey and a turning point in his ministry is when he went to Jerusalem. And he says, now I go into Jerusalem to minister to the saints. Well, we may not all be going to Jerusalem. We may not all be ministering to the saints necessarily. But you know what? There's one place we all need to go, and that is to the Lord Jesus Christ and ask Him to be our Lord and Savior and to confess ourselves sinners and to call upon His name for Jesus' sake and to believe upon Him. And one place you don't want to journey to, and that's a place that's called hell, uh, the place that's also called the lake of fire in the Bible called the lake of fire and it burns with fire and brimstone day and night and the souls that are cast into that they never come out i never wanted to go to a place like that i never wanted to take a journey to hell because those who journey there never return no i don't 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 imagine a vain thing you'll not go there and one day god will have mercy because you've screamed and cried a while oh no you'll never come out you'll never get out of the place called hell and uh, so we should always remember, you don't want to take your journey there. May God help you. Call upon his name.